Hi, I'm Andrew Wilson at Silent Seven Games, and in this video, I'm going to play a quick playtest game of Runeverse. This is the first uh, first version. We're going to see how it goes. So I'm just going to get right into it. We're going to play the Sphine, which is this green faction against Ruby. I'll have Sphine go first, and I'll try to talk through you the rules of the game as we go. So we've already drawn our starting hands. We have our starting decks and a discovery deck, which we'll get to. And then each player has a stack of four Vim, which was dealt from the top of the deck. And they don't know what the contents are of that stack. So the first thing generally you're going to want to do on your turn is play a mage. So we will play either one of them, doesn't matter. And two things happen when you play a mage. One is you take one of your vim, uh, Vigor and put it underneath the mage that you played. The second one is you're going to grab a power, which we'll represent by this token here. This will be its unspent side, and we can flip it to show that it's been spent for the turn, but each turn we'll, we'll refund all of the, all the spent power. So one thing a mage can do on their turn is we can exhaust them to evoke something, in which case we'll probably want to evoke one of these eggs, egg with horns. So we'll do that. That has a level of one. You can see in the top left corner, that means it costs one power to evoke, so we'll flip it over. And this one costs zero, the egg of burgeoning vitality. And that means not only does it cost zero power, but it doesn't require an, a, an action from the mage in order to evoke it. So we'll evoke that as well. And that's kind of just a free thing that we can do. All right, and that's pretty much all we can do on our turn as the Sphine player. So we'll pass over to Ruby. And the Ruby player, so the Sphine player didn't draw a card, but the Ruby player will because they're going second. And whenever you draw the first card of your turn during your normal uh, beginning of turn phase, you can check it to see if you got a mage. And in fact, they did. So if they didn't get a mage, they wouldn't have revealed it. They would have just put in their hand. But since they got a mage, they get to reveal it and show that it is a mage. And that this one in particular has the Vigor gift. So every mage has a gift, and this is the time when it would come into play. And the Vigor gift says add the top card of your deck to your Vigor pile. That's gonna give them basically an extra life point for the game, which is pretty good. Now the once per turn they'll play a mage, they may as well just play the one that their opponent knows they have to uh, take away that information. And then the mage will get one Vigor from the stack. And since they don't know which one's which, it doesn't really matter uh, which one we use here. And then they gain one power for having played a mage. And I've got a few options. Actually, not really any of them are great here. A ruby player would have much rather gone first here. The fiery snowman has a flaming aggressive two, which means as long as it's attacking, it has plus two levels, uh, which is very good on offense. But if it were played now, it'd probably be... Uh, dispelled before it has a chance to attack and use its ability. The Lurching Raptors can't be cats because it costs two. Obviously that one costs six. So you do have another option which is to to discover a card but in this case I think they may as well just basically they have to throw away a snowman here to play it on defense. So we'll tap Pirouette, uh, Pirouette the mage to evoke the fire flaming snowman paying one power and pass the turn back so we will ready all our exhausted cards draw and it's not a mage so we'll just add it to our hand again normally you wouldn't have revealed that unless it were a mage we'll play the one mage that we do have in our hand add the vigor oh, refresh our power and gain a second one and now this is kind of when you would go into the phases when you can play different abilities. Each mage gets basically their own little mini turn, a mage phase of their own. So we can act Silva activate Sylvia or Groshar. And, but what we can't do is have Groshar do something and then switch to something from Sylvia and then back and forth. So you, once you've activated one mage or choose, chosen to activate any of the mage's stuff, you've got to spend 
You gotta do the rest before you move on to a different mage. So this one can pair with an ally creature and give the paired ally plus one level, which would make this a two. Actually, this ability should have happened, which is that on our turn, our turn started, so it gets an L plus one Connor. This is very strong um, in the right circumstances, and this is the right circumstance, I think. It could potentially get out of hand. So it's going to be level two already. And we'll go ahead and activate the the egg to give this plus one. And that makes going to make it a level three. Now we've technically we've activated Sylvia, so we won't be able to um, switch to Groshar and back. So we we'll just have to do, finish doing everything with Sylvia first. And we'll go ahead and attack with the egg with horns. It's level three, and we're going to attack this fiery snowman. It's the only thing we can attack right now, so we will. And we compare its level 3 to the Fire Snowman's level 1, and the Snowman is uh, dispelled. Now, Sylvia can do something. One of the things we could do is evoke another creature. But I think we're going to have Groshar evoke a creature because um, we want her to have some stuff in play as well. And we only have two power, so we'll probably cast one of these for her, which means she's... Sylvia is going to want to do something else. So the other thing a mage can do is once per turn, one of your mages as their action can discover a card. So when you build your deck, you're going to build your normal deck of 30 cards, but you're also going to build your deck of 10 discovery cards. It's just about a different deck. The cards will have different backs, uh, so they can't be mixed in with normal cards. They're specifically discovery cards. And the decks we're playing right now are all mono-colored. They're, they're all one faction but you can mix so you can see Sylvia at the bottom you can see that she has this fiend symbol that's the stag on the bottom middle of the card the top right stag is actually her gift so but that's not what I'm talking about right now and then the top middle there are three icons for diff three different facets there's the trine the sphene and the emery symbols there that means that she can evoke cards of any of those three different factions so when you're building your deck you can mix your factions kind of from the ones that are nearby each other and are allies with each other because these mages can cast cards from different facets. But for now, we are playing just monocolor decks. And here I've got a, one deck for each of the eight facets, and they're all mono. But if you wanted, you could mill, mix them to build your own deck. So... But that comes into play when discovering as well, because you can build your discovery deck how you want, including with a mix of facets. But if you have a mix of mages, you might have to be careful, because what we're going to do is we're going to flip three cards when, when we discover from a shuffled deck. And every time you go to discover, you'll shuffle again. So um, you won't be able to stack it how you want in order to try to find the thing you need. But these are all spin cards, because we have this all Sphene Discovery deck, but if you mix it up, just be aware that even though she can evoke cards of any of those three different facets, Trine, Sphene, or Emery, she can only discover cards that are Sphene. So if I had a mix and happened to hit all Trine cards, for example, that would be this orange color here, um, you wouldn't be able to uh, get the right one. Uh, you wouldn't be able to get them. Actually, I just realized an error I made, which is that this is not the right color. She's not supposed to have trine symbol. She's supposed to have this uh, orth symbol. So that is a mistake that all these Sphene mages will need corrected. But again, that doesn't matter right now because we are playing all Sphene cards in this deck. So now that I've re revealed three discovery cards, I could pick which one to add to my hand. And two different leafy pevens, so I could just pick that or cedar size. I think for now, all right, let's try this one. Let's grab this. And the other two are returned, and then we shuffle. And Sylvia is done. And now Groshar can activate. We'll activate her to and spend two power in order to bring out this critter speaker. And whenever you evoke a creature, it's exhausted. So there's no such thing as like summoning sickness, for example. 
but in general things can't attack on the turn that they are evoked because they come in exhausted. So critter speaker is the ability call critter trigger. So the way you basically read this is the first word is call that bold text there that just is the name of the ability. So a lot of abilities if they use the same words they do the same thing. In this case she calls and what she calls is a critter and then we can see that it's a triggered ability from the trig and then the trigger the event that causes her the rest of the ability to happen is that she's evoked which we just did so we will now do the rest of it which is that we discover a critter and critter speakers mage evokes it for free so we will discover a critter and here we have these three and at the bottom right corner you can see that these are all three critters so we can choose any of these if we had hit these cedar sizes they're not critters so we wouldn't be able to choose that and if we happen to hit three things that weren't critters the critter speaker's ability wouldn't uh, end up doing anything in this case i think let's grab the leafy feven and put the other two back and the ability was to evoke it for free so we did went right into play and that's the end of the turn so we'll switch back to ruby ready their power ready their mage and draw a card that's not a mage so there's no gift and we'll play a mage give her a vigor and gain a second power now this fiend player gotten a little bit out of control already we only have two power to deal with it we can evoke a lurching raptor it has the ability when it joins which is kind of the same as being evoked but if you happen to get a creature into play a different way than evoking it the critter speaker's ability would not happen whereas the lurching raptor's ability would because it joined in any way regardless of whether it was evoked so you can evoke a lurching raptor and that'll immediately ready it which would let it attack right away It'd be good to take out this egg with horns so its ability doesn't keep triggering and making it bigger but this egg of burgeoning vitality is giving it out level plus one so it's currently a three and the lurching raptor is only a two so it wouldn't be able to take it out could take out the egg and survive which might be worthwhile the other option is to Try to take out one of these that's not super great either another thing to consider is that we've got two power and if we spend one on a fiery snowman we'll have one left with nothing to do with it if we spend two on a lurching raptor we'll have zero left so pretty much one of these mages is going to end up discovering so we may as well just do that first so we'll exhaust pirouette to discover now the ruby discovery deck is full of burn spells so sparks cost two and deals four. Heat costs one and deals two. And inspire costs zero and it readies a creature. And because it's cost zero, remember, not only does it not cost any power, but it doesn't even cost the activation action. So this card can be very strong to let a uh, creature attack right away or to attack twice in a single turn. So this sparks would cost all of our two power, but we could take out this egg before it gets completely out of hand. Or we could grab heat, but if we grab heat, it I could spend one of our power, but we have to activate to use it, and we've already activated one, so we won't be able to activate Sulfi to both play the snowman and heat, for example. I think the best thing is actually to take this inspire so we'll put these two back and i'm going to do this play that hopefully works out so we'll exhaust sulfi and spend two power to play lurching raptor it comes into play exhausted but then its ability readies it right away now actually well first we will have the lurching raptor attack the egg the egg is a level zero so level zeros don't like just die immediately or something but they have to be attacked but when they're attacked they're just done they don't deal any damage back and technically they don't even have to receive damage to um, be defeated or dispelled just because they're attacked that's enough so the egg is gone and then 
we'll have Sulfi play Inspire, which will ready the Lurching Raptor. And the Inspire, it just goes, whenever a discovery card is done for any reason, it just goes back to the discovery deck. And we shuffle. So now the Lurching Raptor can attack again. And it's taken zero damage. So we could take out the Critter Speaker or the Leafy Feven, except that once Sulfi had her Lurching Raptor attack this egg, which was controlled by Sylvia, that locked in the fact that Sulfi was engaging Sylvia this turn. Now Sulfi can't do anything to interact with any other of the Sphene Mages this turn. So the Lurching Raptor actually cannot attack Critter Speaker or Leafy Feven because of that. The only option is to have the Lurching Raptor attack the Egg with Horns. The Egg with Horns is no longer getting level plus one, so it's just a two because of one plus it's one counter, and we will have the level two Lurching Raptor fight the level two Egg with Horns, and they are both dispelled. Which is good for the Ruby player, I think, because that could have gotten out of hand. Although it's bad for the Ruby player because they are now just totally playing defensively. They have no creatures in play to defend their mages, and we'll see what that means in a second. The, Ru uh, the Sphene player will ready their cards, ready their power, and draw. And this one is a mage. So another copy of Sylvia. This is a prototype. The plan is to have every mage be unique, a different name and a different artwork. Because I don't like the idea of having two of the same person in play. Um, so the, these will be unique eventually. But they will have, they'll effectively be the same in that they'll have the same gift. And they don't do much other than um, the three different facets of cards they can evoke. And then what gift they have. All the Sphene Mages have the same gifts that they can evoke, or the same uh, cards they can evoke. Again, it needs to change on these cards in particular, but so they will all be the same in that way, and they'll just be four different gifts total, which is what there are currently. So the Mages will effectively be the same as each other, but they will have different names and different artwork for thematic purposes. So the Sphene Gift, which is going to happen right now, is creatures controlled by your Mage with the most get lo level plus two until the end of your next turn or until your next end of turn. So since this is happening on our own turn, it will last until the end of this current turn. And that will obviously apply to Groshar because she's got two creatures in play. Both of these will become level fours this turn. Although it doesn't matter because there's no opposing creatures to contest. So we'll play Sylvia, another one, and give her a bigger and gain power. Now, it's pretty straightforward that we want to have Leafy Feven will attack uh, Sulfi directly, because Sulfi has no creatures to defend herself. Neither does Pyrite, but either one. And that means that this Vigor is going to go away. We'll flip it over, and we revealed another mage. In this case, it happens to be another Sulfi. Again, this would change name and artwork to be unique but same gift which is the ruby gift an enemy mage with the most creatures becomes vulnerable until your next turn so that's interesting vulnerable basically means vulnerable is what Sulfi and pyrat are right now they've got no creatures defending them that makes them vulnerable well this effect this gift just makes them vulnerable no matter what so that means groshar will be vulnerable uh until the ruby player's next end of turn, which means it will last all the way throughout their next turn. Uh, this card that was a Vigor is now, because it had a gift, it happens. Groshar is affected by that, and then this will be added to the ruby player's hand, but they're now down one Vigor, one life point, essentially. Now, Critter Speaker can attack, but, again, Critter Speaker cannot attack Pyroet because we've already had Groshar engage Sulfi this turn. What she can do is attack Sulfi directly. And that's just going to discard her. Um, one thing I forgot, actually, is when that Vigor was taken, the Ruby player gains an additional point of power. Uh, losing the Mage doesn't do anything. It just kind of takes you down one activation for the turn, which could be pretty bad. Here, the Sphene player has three power to spend. Groshar could spend some of that and bring something out. I don't think we want to go wide a little bit instead, so we'll have her activate to discover. 
We got two stump shamans and a leafy feven. Let's take a stump shaman for diversity. We'll have this Salvia just to bring out a critter speaker, which again will trigger its call ability. We'll discover again. It's getting pretty out of hand pretty quickly. This card's very strong. And we'll grab this one. This seems very strong. So it has the ability when it's evoked, which is right. Uh, actually, it didn't happen. Oh, yeah, it's getting evoked for free. So uh, it's when it's evoked, it gets one Vim. Now, Vim is kind of like a Vigor. So the Vigor are the life points that the players have that they give to their mages that can be attacked and destroyed. Um, and it, But it's a face-down card underneath the mage, and it's in that sense that a Vim is like a Vigor. So this is a face-down card from the top of our deck. We don't know what it is really doesn't matter and it's going to go underneath the sprightly flarf as one vim if the sprightly flarf would be dispelled it loses its vim instead and gets to stay in play so we'll put these two back and that was two of our power we'll activate sylvia to evoke this egg with horns just another thing that's going to give plus levels and now this fiend player is way ahead and we'll switch over to the Ruby player. So we're ready. Get their three power. Draw a card. It's another pirouette. So this has a Vigor gift, so we'll get another Vigor. Pretty good. And we'll play the Sulfi that we already showed. And put that Vigor underneath her, giving us another power. So Ruby's now up to four power, but only two mages and way behind on creatures. Well, they did spend that third one. With four power. So hopefully they get up to this. That could do a lot. Uh, the Raptor could help a little bit. It's worth remembering that Groshar is vulnerable this turn. So if they had anything that could attack, they could attack her directly. Snowman is very dangerous to play too early. Only having two mages to attack with, or to activate, is going to be a pretty big hindrance. It's one of the things I'm still thinking about um, for while playtesting is, is that even a thing that should be allowed to happen? Maybe all four mages get to fight the full battle. Uh, and you can't destroy them, you can just claim the vigor, which is how you win anyway. We could play this Ruby Servitor. It's roaming, which won't be a huge hugely useful. When she roams, she readies. So roaming means you would exhaust her to move her to another mage, but the wander ability would then let her ready. So it's basically not a downside to roam with her, but if you're not planning to roam, she's not much better than a level 3 anyway. This card would obviously be great to evoke, but we've only got the 4. So we could do 2 and 3. We could take advantage of the fact that Grosher is vulnerable, and play the Lurching Raptor, ready it, and attack her directly, which would take out her Vigor. But it doesn't solve the problem of having these uh, creatures to deal with. And because getting rid of a Vigor brings you closer to winning, but it also gives your opponent an extra card and an extra power. And with Sveen already being ahead, even though we could see the opportunity to take out a, a Vigor, I think it's a little risky and it's better to do some damage control and take out some of these creatures that will be attacking us. So again I think we're in the situation that no we're gonna we're gonna waste a power we'll exhaust pirouette to uh, evoke a snowman and exhaust sulfi to evoke a lurching raptor which will then ready and I think it makes sense to have the raptor go after this egg with horns before it starts growing. So we'll take that out. And the level 2 versus the level 1 means the raptor is fine. And that will be the ruby player's turn. So Sphine will ready. Draw. Not a mage. Ready these. And they actually don't have the fourth mage to play. So you can only have four mages kind of active at a time. You can play more than that to gain additional power each time. 
but four is the most you can have that have like creatures in play that are activating to evoke spells and or activating to discover or anything like that so it'd be real nice to hit four especially to hit the fourth power that's good for the ruby player that they didn't take out this figure because then this fiend player would have four power and would be able to play this big card which is very strong although the ruby player doesn't necessarily know that but they played it safe i think and that worked out Sphine player is in a pretty strong position, but they only have three power. They could play this, makes one thing a lot bigger, but since their stuff is pretty much big enough, there's not a huge reason to do that. I think it makes sense. Let's let's start with this. Let's have Groshar discover and see what we get. There's nothing that costs one. It's all these critters that cost two and then the cedar sizes, but do it anyway. Take another Stump Shaman. Again, I don't think the roaming uh, is gonna be hugely beneficial this game. And now to attack. I think it makes sense to just have the level two Leafy Feven take out the level one Snowman, and then the Critter Speaker can take out this Vigor from Pyroette. So flip it, it is a mage. So again, it's the ruby gift that makes it a mage vulnerable. The effect is the mage, the enemy mage with the most creatures. Technically, Sylvia and Groshar are tied this turn. In cases of a tie, the active player will choose. So the Sphine player gets to choose, and I guess they'll choose Groshar again. Um, it's not a huge reason to choose one or the other. And then this card is added to the hand. This time they. Sphine player does not have another creature to attack Pirouette, so she will not leave play. Next, I think we'll have Sylvia activate. We could attack Pirouette and take her off the table, but I think we will go for Sophie instead and take out her Vigor and just try to close out the game. So the Sprightly Flarf will attack the Lurching Raptor. They're level 2 versus level 2, so they both would go except for that Slightly Flarf has this Vim. The Vim is not like a Vigor. You do not get to check it for a gift. It's just going to be discarded. But that's okay. And then the Critter Speaker will attack Sulfi and take out this one. We'll check it. It's not a mage, but it goes to hand. And now the Ruby player is very low. Although they do gain two more power. So now they're at six. And they'll be able to play another mage on their turn and go to seven. So we will potentially do a good amount of stuff. We'll see how that works out. The Sylvia can now activate. She can't discover because Groshar already did that. I can scoot these over in case she wants to evoke another creature. Although again, we only have three power. And I think we'll actually save that power for this Sylvia over here. So, oops. So we will ready this one. She's actually not going to activate this turn. And we'll activate this Sylvia, spend two power, to evoke this Stump Shaman and pass the turn. So Ruby will ready, draw, another Pent Eruption. So what this does, it costs six, attacks for up to five, or attacks up to five of an engaged mage's creatures for a total of level five, divided as you choose between those creatures. In this case, we won't be able to do any better than taking out two creatures. And it will cost almost all We'll go ahead and play this mage and give her a Vigor, uh, which gives us the power. So we do have seven, and this would cost almost all of it. We could play an Ember Boar, which has the activated power to uh, attack for two and then die. So even though it's a level one, the ability would let it attack for two. So we can use this as like a one-shot effect. So if we do want to do six and then seven, spend our power that way, we could do that, and that's looking like the best option. That will leave Sephiron undefended, and this figure might be taken out, but we could take out at least three of these five creatures that are plaguing us. Another option is to play the Ruby Servitar. Well, if we play the Ember Boar and the Pentaruption, that is two of our uh, three mage activations. So one of them is going to be discovering so we may as well do that first so we'll do that blaze 
a blaze or a heat. So blaze costs four and deals eight. Attacks for eight. There's no one thing that it's worth spending four power to take out. The heat, on the other hand, attacks for two for only one, which is basically what we would be using our ember bore for here. So I think we'll take the heat and save our bore for later. So which one is it that can't be... So this one has ward. It can't be chosen for opposing effects. We won't be able to take out that one. Flarf is vulnerable and the critter speaker... So, I guess we'll go ahead and have Sulfi spend six to play a Pentaruption, and we will split that attack between the Critter Speaker and the Sprightly Flarf. And that was only four of the potential five, but there's nothing we can do with that last point. Um, basically, there we had Sulfi engage with Sylvia in order to use the Pentaruption, and you can't, and since you can't engage with more than one mage, and because the card attack says so. Um, that last point of damage can't go anywhere. This card it seems pretty strong, but I wonder if it is worth making it cost only five, just to make it a little bit better. But we'll put that on the back burner for now. And then Sepharon, with the last point of power for them, will cast the heat and take out. I think it. I think it's worth taking out the critter speaker. I don't know. It's an interesting strategic question of whether it's better to take out the one cre the creature of the mage who only has one, or one of the two creatures of the mage who has two. Don't know the answer. I think for now we'll take out this critter speaker, and then the heat, having been played, returns to the discovery deck. And that's it. Pass back to the Sphine player. Um, and we'll draw. Not a mage. And still only have three power, so that is throttling them a bit. They don't have the fourth mage, and having not lost any bigger, they haven't gotten any additional like the that ruby player did. We've taken out three of the ruby player's vigor so far, but because they hit two bigger gifts, they have two still left in reserve. So this is another interesting case, because, for example, we could send this Leafy Feven after Seferon, take out her vigor, and then have the Stump Shaman, uh, basically has no, even though the Ruby player has two vigor left, we've got no way to take it out. So it does extend the game a bit. That's a thing I'm wondering about from a design standpoint. I uh, don't have a fourth power, so really we can't do much more than play a Stump Shaman. We could play an Oaken Size, but again, making one of our things bigger isn't hugely beneficial here. So I think we'll have Sylvia, actually. Now let's activate Groshar uh, to discover. And we'll take this Leafy Feven. I think the ward is going to be more beneficial than a taunt right now against the burn spells. And then Leafy Feven will take out this Vigor. Not a mage. It's no gift. And we may as well have Sylvia um, play this Leafy Feven Oops, for two of our three power. And then this Sylvia's Stump Shaman can either, I guess, go ahead and attack one of these mages and get them off the table. And then we pass the turn. And the Ruby player only has the two mages. Gift check, no gift. And ready all seven power. That means we can cast another Pentaruption, but it's much worse this time because nobody has two creatures. So really, it's obvious in hindsight, they should have used that Burn Spell to take out the Stump Shaman last turn so that the Leafy Feven... Actually, Leafy Feven has wards, so it doesn't actually matter here. Let's see. So here we might want to cast multiple things. So we could play another Mage, Pirouette. Actually, I, s I think I may have made this mistake earlier in the game, but when you start your turn with no Vigor in play, but you still have some in your stack, because if you didn't have any in your stack, you would have lost the game already, uh, you're supposed to take one and move it to one of your mages that's in play. So because the Ruby player started their turn without this Pyroid in play, they should have moved one Vigor onto this Pyroid and then played... Oops, I accidentally got a peek there. 
and then played this pirouette and gotten another bigger. So they've got all, this is their last bigger they could potentially lose on this main player's next turn. The Pentaruption isn't going to help them a significant amount. They'd love to kill some stuff. Let's see. The boar can take out, can be chosen for opposing effects. I think that I'll have to rework the wording, but the intention here is that this ability would not let um, the Leafy Feven be attacked by it and with the ability. So Leafy Fevens are immune to that. Stump Shaman's not, so you could use this boar to take out the Shaman. The egg can be activated to ready an ally, but since it becomes it comes into play exhausted, it won't be able to do it immediately. And the Rex Imp is a very strong attacker. It attacks as a level 5, but uh, I think just the fact that it's a level 2 is all the benefit we're going to get here. Level 3 is actually bigger than any of this fiend mages, or the fiend player's creatures. If we didn't, you know, as we were able to see this fiend player's hand and see that they can use their oaken sizes or cedar sizes to get bigger than this, but the ruby player might be thinking, hey, a level 3 is bigger than any of my opponent's stuff, maybe I should play this. But with 7 power, we might just end up playing it anyway. We do want to defend our last two bigger. So, what can we do? You can play all three of these, all four of these cards, really. Three, five, six, and still have power to spare, since the zero doesn't require an activation. Or we can discover a card and then cast that uh, to try to take something out, but we can't take out either of these. And the boar could take out this shaman, so. I think what we want to do is not discover. I don't know. We do slightly less stuff by discovering, but you kind of want to discover every turn when you can to stay up in cards. But I think we're going to skip discovering. We're going to have Sulfi evoke this boar and use its power right away, or its uh, ability right away, to activate and attack for two and attack the Stump Shaman. So, take it out. Pyroette will evoke a Ruby Centaur, or Servitar. And this Pyroette will evoke this Rex Imp and this Egg. And we'll, with two cards left in our hand, we will hope that keeps us alive for the turn. All right, so Spin Player readies, gets their two power, draws, not a mage. Still only on three power, but they're doing just fine with it. One bigger left. So with three, we've actually got several options here. We could play either the twos and waste one. It doesn't sound great. Or we could use either of these oaken sizes or play this boulder grump. The boulder grump is level three, but it's a level two while attacking and a level seven while defending. It's a very strong defender. But I don't think... It makes sense right now because we're on the aggressive. So maybe we use an oak in size to make a real big leafy feather in order to hit this servitar. And maybe even take out this last, second to the last vigor in order to be able to laser focus in on this last one on future turns. So I think we'll do that. We'll, um, we're not going to bring out any creatures, which means Sylvia here is going to be undefended. So maybe we want to leave her undefended as bait in hopes our opponent takes it out, then we get a fourth power, and then we'll be able to play our Boreal Liege. We'll see how that plays out. So I think, since we know we're only going to play one thing, we'll have Groshar discover again. And just grab this Flarf. It has a Vim. A lot of cards in hand, because we don't have the power to play it. Uh, this is not stacking up. All right, we'll deal with that. There we go. Why did it say three? I guess because we've got everything else is in player in our hand. Oh, one of the mistake I made here. This Stump Shaman, this Brightly Flarf. Everything that died from our Discovery deck is meant to return. So these really should have been here. But I'm just going to backtrack again. Now, we activate Groshar. Um, I did that in the wrong order. That was bad, because now 
you know, I guess we'll just, we'll just, no rewinding, we'll just go with it. We'll have the Leafy Feven attack this Rex Imp and trade so that it doesn't get to attack for five, as a five. Because if we let it start attacking us, uh, it won't die. So that creature was discovered, it goes back. And what we wanted to do was have Sylvia spend three power to Oaken Size the Leafy Feven. Um, and then use it to take out Servitar, and then go to Groshar and have her creature take out Pyroette's Vigor, but we didn't, so move on with our life, and then Sylvia can't do anything. We already discovered, we're out of power, so we are done. All right, and the Ruby player feels a little bit okay, because they didn't lose that turn. They reveal Skaldriel, which is a draw gift, which means we'll immediately draw a card, extra card. The extra cards you draw don't have an opportunity to trigger gifts. Only the first one each turn. But go ahead and play that. There's no more Vigor, so we don't... Um, she doesn't get one, but we do get an extra power. Oops, that was... Oops. That was too much. Alright. So we're up to eight power. Now, this Pentaruption is looking pretty good to take out this level 5 Leafy Feven, except for that it's warded. So, that's actually really bad. The Ruby player, who can primarily deal with big stuff through attacking. But, this is going to come in handy. So, activate Pyroette to red, uh, evoke this Rex Imp. Comes in exhausted, just like normal. Spend our 2 power. Then, oops, activate the Flaming Motivation ability to ready the Rex Imp. And now it can attack as a level 5, attack this Leafy Feven, and take it out. Don't know why this is like that. Okay. Alright, now we've still got 6 power. Not much to do. We could play this, but then do anything here. So I guess we will use her to discover. Hit a burn spell. Spain player is now out of stuff. Let's see how that plays out. Attack for six, ready a creature, attack for four. Let's take the. I always like the inspire. Now let's play a little more. No, yeah, let's take the inspire. Alright. Uh, we can't discover again, and we really. Don't have anything to play, so we only spent two power this turn, and the Ruby player's done. Alright, Fiend player readies. Draw. Got a Vigor Gift, so they add one. And still only have three. And no creatures. And now the Ruby player's got a little bit of an advantage. Um, so let's go ahead and play this. All three, and we will red air uh, activate one to discover. Take this one, it's very strong against the ruby player, and we're out of power. Already discovered, so we'll pass back. Draw. And the ruby player is incentivized to have pyroite here evoke more creatures, because the Egg of Endless Magma can just keep readying them. Oh, we also have an Inspire, and then we've got this, uh, another Egg. It's not going to do it. The interruption can attack for 5, but this gets plus 4 while defending, and this technically is an attack, so attacks for 5, so this would defend us 7. Um, it's very hard to kill, but we have some big burn spells, so let's have Sulfi discover and hope for a, oops, a big, a big burn spell here. And that's the big one, Blaze. So we need to do seven. This can attack for eight. So we'll grab the Blaze. We will have Skaldriel evoke the Blaze and take out this Boulder Grump. That was four of the power. And now we can start going in. It's a shame we don't have any more creatures that can attack other than this Rex Imp, but we can actually attack multiple times here. 
So let's have the Rex Imp. Ah, man, this fire is very strong. Uh, Rex Imp will attack us. Sylvia. Not a, not a mage, so it just goes to hand. And they finally get their fourth power. Egg will ready the Rex Imp, and it can attack again. Again, I can't attack again because they're already engaged. Oh, they can engage as a Zavaya, so they can attack again. They just, I was thinking they would take out another Vigor. They can't do that. They can take out Zavaya. But now the Sphinx player is down a whole mage, which the Ruby player had to deal with earlier on in the game. And then I suppose we'll activate Pirouette and just bring out this egg at no cost. And pass the turn. All right. Spin player is going to need to make a comeback now. All right, so Dispel Gift, Dispel an Enemy Creature. And since it is happening on their own turn, they get to choose, and they'll go ahead and hit this Rex Imp. Boom, and add it to hand, add this to hand. And then we will play a Mage and give her a Vigor, which gives us another power. Did I just skip playing a mage last turn? I might have done that. All right, we now have five power. We really want to play this Arboreal Leech, but we don't have anything to do with the one left over. But does it make sense to do a three and a two instead and save the Leech? This guy's very big. Strength three, he's a little, cost three, and he's level six because of the strength three ability. And then we could play something like the Leafy Feven or the Sprightly Flark, because they're very um, survivable. So yeah, let's do that. We'll save the Arboreal Leech. We'll have Gracilda evoke Suidum. Groshar will evoke Sprightly Flark, gain a Vim. And that is five. And then she will discover. So Vaya will discover. Another Flark. So there's Cedar Size. Let's take the Flark. All right, pass back to Ruby. What can they do? Now the mage, three tail fox gives spell damage three, uh, which means the mage that is controlling this three tail fox, if that mage plays a spell that does an attack, it does attacks for three more. Which lets you get away with playing really cheap spells to do a lot of damage. We have no attackers right now. These level zeros are not going to be very effective. They can't even take out the vigor of the uh, vulnerable mage here. So we could play a three tail fox, but then we won't be able to take advantage of it uh, this turn. So we would want it to survive until next turn when that mage can then start evoking for damage. Pent Eruption would deal 5, which is not quite enough to take out the Suidum. And it would only hit the Sprightly Flarf and get rid of one of the Vim. So it's not super effective when your opponents don't have multiple creatures by one mage. We can play the Three Tail Fox and ready it. We can ready it up to twice using the Inspire and the Egg. Either one of these eggs. Which could let it attack twice, which could let it attack, uh, take out the Sprightly Flarf. An interesting thing to note is that a level 3 attacking a level 2 will take out the level 2, obviously, but the level 3, and the level 3 survives, but they do take 2 damage that lasts throughout the turn, and so when the 3 tail fox would hypothetically attack the sprightly flarf the second time, it would take 2 more damage for a total of 4 damage that turn, which is more than its level of 3, so it would actually uh, be taken out. Definitely think we're going to discover, so we may as well do it now. I guess we'd like to get the blaze, right? The, oh, we didn't get a blaze. Can't attack for four, two, or four. Neither of that, none of that is six. We could have the three tail fox team up with one of these in order to take this thing out. Putting a lot of focus on taking it out because it's very dangerous. So it's unfortunate we didn't hit a blaze, because we can afford it in terms of power, but didn't. And that's the point of discovering, is it's, you never know what you're going to get. Even though you get to build your discovery deck, 
Uh, you can only play so many copies of each card, which I'm still trying to decide. Right now there are two copies of each card, except for the Fist Discovery deck actually has ten unique cards in it. And I'm wondering if it's more interesting if the Discovery cards are limited to one each to really add more uh, variety and surprise to the way the game plays out. You're not supposed... The Discovery deck isn't supposed to be a way that you can just go get the thing you want when you need it. Um, of course, you're hoping to get the thing you want, but... So yeah, I think I think we gotta get rid of Sewer Doom, so we'll have Pyroette evoke the Sweet Tail Fox, use the egg to ready it, and then have it attack into Sewer Doom, which does dispel the Three Tail Fox. It puts three damage onto Sewer Doom for the rest of the turn, and we spent three power on that. We will have Sulfi spend two to evoke the sparks to deal the four to the Suidum and dispel it, returning sparks to our discovery deck. And we've got three power, but nothing to do with it. Um, egg might not last and pass the turn. Alright, I have two Arboreal Leeches. Still no sixth power to be able to play Arbor Arboreal Leech and something else, but without the Suidum as an alternative power play, I think it's time to just drop a Leech. So I'll have Sprightly Flarf take out an egg, because that's easy and free. We could take out one of these mages instead. Um... Maybe is actually even better. Now let's do that. Let's take out a mage instead. These vulnerable ones. Groshar, we'll have her discover. I'm gonna run out of cards here. Discovery deck. It's all in our hand. I don't think we need a cedar size, so we'll just take the two level two. And we'll have Gracilda evoke an arboreal leech. Now this hen has it's like the critter speaker, but it has call two. Instead of call critter, it has call two critter. So when it's evoked it discover a critter and evoke it for free and then do it again so let's choose the best ones that definitely this one with ward the leafy feven and then we're actually doing two separate discoveries so we put those two back and then there's only three cards left in there anyway we'll take this one for the taunt and put these two back i'm not sure what to do when there are only two left do you just do it anyway or are you not allowed to discover? Part of me is wondering, maybe you shouldn't even be allowed to discover unless you have four cards left. At least four, so that you don't know what you're going to get. But for now, we're just discovering. Even if there's only one card left, you'll just get that one. And so those are all... Uh, we spent four. And Sylvia, we already discovered. We don't have anything to do with one power, so we pass the turn. This game is definitely going on longer than I expected. Oh, we get a Vigor. <laughs> Speaking of going on longer than I expected, get another Vigor. So we'll play her and get the Vigor. And another power. Four, eight, nine power. Very big. All right. So we sell these two eggs, no creatures. Guess we just need to find. We need to find the burn spells, but what are we even hoping for? Because we can't attack the Arboreal Leech while this is taunting. We have to take out the Stump Shaman first. So we this is basically going to be unchecked, at least for now. Attack for four, attack for six, attack for six. Doesn't matter. Let's leave the sixes. That doesn't matter. It's all going to go back to the same place. And we will have her sparks the stump shaman. And that's all we can do. That's not true. I can use this to take out the arboreal leash. So let's do that. May as well use it. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's just one thing we're taking out. This is back here. It's going to attack for five, which is one extra than we needed, but okay. And that's done. 
And the level zeros don't do anything still, but they're still alive. Sphene player's turn. Ready. Ready the power. Draw an egg. All right. We still have three vigor over there, man. All right, so let's have this leafy feven take out this egg. Uh, Grisilda, three cards left. I have five power still. Fourth figures never hit the table. Um, let's have, let's bring out this egg for her. And do we have her discover? May as well. Only three cards. Good thing I shuffled them. Let's grab this. Because the next thing we're going to do uh, is have Sylvia play the other liege. And we're basically just going to discover each of these. Now we're out of discoveries. Groshar, Sprightly Flower, can either attack the egg, but I think we're just going to go for the kill. Let's when we can. Alright, so this is to spell... Um... This is an interesting situation. I'm still not totally sure about how the rules should work here. The spell gift dispels an enemy creature. One of the design principles is that if it's not your turn, you don't get to make any decisions. So there are a few reasons for that that I won't get into, but that means the Sphene player would technically get to choose which of their creatures this gift hits. Which doesn't make a ton of sense. I might want to reword it to that, like, If a creature is attacking, that's the one that gets hit. That makes the most sense thematically, but it's a bunch of rules, wording loopholes to jump through. Let's try to make that work without taking up a ton of text. So we might just want to have that hit this, which would get rid of its vim, but um, ideally the ruby player, I think, would like to hit the level four. That'd be good. But it doesn't make a ton of sense without them just deciding that, which again, I don't want to happen uh, for that to happen. One thing you could say is, it destroys the enemy's biggest creature. Actually, that makes sense. Spell an enemy's biggest creature. I think that makes sense. So we'll we'll have that be the wording, and that'll take out this leech for now. Now this is added to their hand. All right. And now Groshar doesn't have much left to do. Uh, with one power already evoked or discovered, so uh, all done. Ruby player. Draw. Oh, there's another gift. Draw a card. So we draw it again, which is good because all these mages aren't doing much. And there's another one. Okay, so the Ruby player already has four mages in play. You can play more mages, so we're going to do that. They go off to the side in reserve, and that means if you're ever down a mage, you can just bring in one from the reserve. So if, for example, the Sphene player attacked one of these on their next turn, then on the Ruby player's next turn, they could just pull in another mage to replace it, and that lets you act, continue activating. Uh, it gives you the full four activations, or, or whatever the case may be. But putting one in reserve does give you another power. So, three, six, nine, ten power. Still nothing to do with it. Let's discover a card. Not sure what we're hoping for, because um, all these burn spells uh, can't take out more than one thing. So, attack for six, attack for four, attack for eight. Let's take the cheapest one, because nothing's bigger than a level 2 right now. Um, eh, hmm. Taunt, Egg, Ward. Wards are dangerous stuff, man. Alright, but let's um, exhaust this for 2, turn this, and just take out the Taunt one, because why not? I think this is pretty much the end here. The Ruby player is out of stuff to do. They do a lot of mages. A little bit unlucky to have drawn that many. I mean, a lot of them gave gifts, but that just kind of prolonged the game rather than letting them end it. And Sphene player's been playing this whole time with only two power. Or for a while it was three, now we're only up to five. We got plenty of stuff to do with small amounts of power, and the Ruby player's got plenty of power with not much to do with it. So the Floral Dancer 
Uh, let's just attack the egg. Done. So if I could play something, uh, may as well just have her do it. Let's play this guy. It's a level four for two. Cost two. The sprightly flarf will attack this mage, and they get a card. Uh, Groshar, sure, may as well evoke. Let's bring out this leafy feven. Oops. Make sure the vim stays with it. And then uh, we'll have the egg give plus one to the leafy feven, which will then attack for as a level three. Although the level doesn't matter as long as it's at least one and take out the final vigor. If this is a vigor gift, the game will continue. But I think the ruby player already hit all three vigor gifts, so no go. And there's a burning dragon, which would have been nice earlier in the game, but that's the end. The spin player took it, finally ground out all seven vigor from the ruby player, even though you only start with four. And that's the game. Obviously, it took a lot longer than I expected. I said it'd be a quick game. What's our time here? An hour. Wow. So I talked through a lot of it, but I think it wouldn't have necessarily been too much shorter if two players were playing it out. So that might be something to take a look at, is do I really want the games to be taking an hour? To figure out ways to maybe make it go a little faster or something like that. Uh, could be an issue of card quality. Sometimes if you just are playing with kind of basic cards, the games can take longer because you don't have the big powerful moves that help the games end more quickly. So that could be an issue. Another issue is... Um, I don't know. Maybe the, the Ruby player got a little far behind. They started to make a comeback. Never actually took out a Vigor, but there were several turns when they were able to clean out the Vigor player's board. Right before this game, I actually buffed the burn spells in the Ruby Discovery deck. They were weaker, and I made them... Basically, they all did as much... They attacked for as much as they cost. Now they attack for more than they cost. I think they're all double. So, I already buffed the Ruby player a little bit. But yeah, something to consider. If you have any feedback, let me know. If you have any ideas for what might be take, making the game take so long. I played a few games before, and the games were shorter. The Ruby player won one, and the Sphin player won one. And neither of them took an hour. So it could be just a game-by-game -game basis where you never know exactly how it's going to play out. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.